Okay. So thank you so much, um, Carter and Sam for joining us. Um, and we're really looking forward to this presentation. Just before we start, we want to remind everyone that we're recording this webinar and we're going to make it available afterwards uh, to view on the OpenTrans website. We'll also send everyone who registered a copy of the presentation and recording via email within 48 hours. Um, you probably know this already, but you, you're all on mute um, and, we, and we'll stay on mute until the, uh, until the very end. But um, you can ask a question in the Q&A box down at the bottom. That's live right now. You can ask the questions uh, while Sam and Carter are talking um, and we'll have a, a live Q&A where, where they'll answer your questions at the end. So with that, welcome Sam, Carter, great to have you here and um, take it away. Thank you and thank you everybody for joining. Um, we're really excited to present today uh, and we're really thankful for the OpenTrans team for, for hosting us. Um, quickly, uh, I'm Sam, I'm an account executive at Monomer Bio. Um, I'm gonna be running half of today's presentation and then I'm joined by my colleague Carter, who's our application scientist and Carter is going to be running the other half of the presentation. We'll kind of hand this back and forth as we go through things. In terms of an agenda for today, we're going to start today's webinar with some background on Monomer Bio, the company that uh, Carter and I work for. Um, we're then going to talk specifically about building fully automated cell culture work cells. Um, and so we'll get into the details on how we leverage the OpenTrons OT2 as part of a work cell um, that we power with our software. Then I'm gonna hand it to Carter, who's gonna talk through automating cell culture with the OT2, uh, both from a liquid handling perspective and from a perspective of making it compatible with robotic arms, which are gonna be loading plates on and off deck on the open trance. And then we'll finish today with a quick view into Monomer's vision for closed loop cell culture. As a bit of background on Monomer, um, we're experts in lab automation and software development. So our team has a lot of extensive experience building fully automated work cells for biology research. Um, and we power these work cells with our software platform. And right now our software platform is specifically geared towards automating cell biology with a focus on cell culture and cell engineering workflows. Our approach to automating these cell culture and cell engineering workflows is to take disparate instruments, off the shelf instruments like the OT2, uh, various microscopes, incubators, and connect them together into one cohesive system. Um, we, this system is called a work cell for those unfamiliar with that term. It's a pretty standard term in the lab automation space. And it refers to some set of instruments that are connected together uh, to execute an automated workflow. So our approach is to do this with off-the-shelf instruments and use our software platform to connect everything together and make things work. Um, you have some images there of one of the work cells and then um, a, an isometric diagram of one of these work cells that we've built. And we'll get into the details uh, of those in a second. Our vision as a lab automation software provider is to marry the two sides of this diagram that you see in front of you. Um, we wanna be really good at execution. So that is controlling instruments and scheduling workflows on those instruments to continuously carry out cell culture operations. We then merge that with the right side of this diagram, which is a data management and decision-making system that's built to ingest the scientific data coming off of the instruments and present those data to the operator, the scientists, such that they can uh, review results, you know, intervene if there are issues, and basically generate insights and feed those insights back into the execution. So at Monomer, we see lab automation as a combination of experiment execution, bioinformatics, and data science. And so in order to do all three of those things well, we're focused right now on cell biology, cell culture, and cell engineering. At the end, I'm going to be building up to a demonstration of this closed loop automation vision that we have that is going to show you, it's going to 
basically a live demo of the screen that you have in front of you now. Um, just previewing, previewing this as a little bit of a tease. Um, the, this screen, this uh, product will allow you to manage cultures that are being processed on the work cell and view the data you're gathering in real time. Where we're going to start today is talking about some of these work cells that Monomer Bio has built alongside our customers. So I'll start with an example uh, that we built alongside our customer Science Corporation. So Science Corporation is making medical uh, implanted devices that will cure blindness. And these devices require stem cells as the interface point between the device and the host patient. So in order to do their research, they need a steady supply of stem cells and they contracted with Monomer to construct a work cell that is now powered by our software. This work cell is comprised of a PF400 robotic arm, uh, a 220 plate capacity Lyconic incubator, the Opentron's OT2 liquid handler, which is used to do media feeding, exchanging, passaging, and then the Biotech Citation 5 is what Science Corp is using as a readout to gather uh, growth data and, and monitor the health of their cultures. So here are a few images of this system, starting with the top image. So this is one half of the work cell deck. You'll see the Opentrons with the HEPA filter on top of it. That's where we do all of the liquid handling and the processing of these cells. We have some media hotels to just store reagents and then the, the microscope there on the right. The whole system is connected together by a robotic arm on a rail. And the, if you look in the bottom left photo here, the right side of that rail, we have a media fridge and the incubator. So Science Corporation's operators like uh, Mo, our friend at Science Corp, run their experiments on monomer software which is connected to this work cell and allows them to carry out cell culture processes uh, in an automated fashion. One other example, this is one we've built with our customer Indie Labs. So Indie Labs is building an instrument called the Hydropore, which is essentially an electroporator, and they're specifically using it in uh, CAR T therapeutic development. And so they need a steady supply of human T cells in order to do their downstream work. Um, Monomer worked with Indy to build this work cell, which is comprised of a robotic arm, a small four plate incubator, again, the open trons. And instead of a microscope, uh, because these cells are in suspension, um, we're using a flow cytometer along with a centrifuge to uh, do cell counts and monitor the growth of these cells. And here we have an image of, of this work cell. This is a much smaller one. It just sits on top of a, a lab bench. Um, and you can see a, a top-down view of this layout with the opentrons in the top left, incubator, and then our centrifuge and flow cytometer on the other side. At this point, I'm gonna jump into Monomer software and I'm gonna give you a preview of how scientists using the Monomer software run experiments on these work cells. So I've moved over into Monomer software. This is a, our cloud instance. Um, we have a local version of our software that will be on site connected to the work cell running experiments. And then scientists can actually log in via the cloud and control that system from anywhere. What you're seeing in front of you is a overview of the work cell. So we've created an interface for each of these instruments that's involved in this work cell. This is the example of the Science Corporation work cell. So we have media hotels, which are storing things like tip racks or extra reagents, a fridge, which we have loaded with various plates of m -teaser and other media, the Opentrons deck with an interface and a tip rack preloaded, and then our incubator, our microscope, and our robotic arm. As we schedule experiments in the software, 
this will animate and you can track the progress and the, and the processes being performed uh, from this screen. If you're a scientist, you go into the operator actants and this is how you interact with this work cell. These teal items below, these allow you to load new reagents on the work cell or check a new culture into the incubator. Very simple operations that let you update the deck and uh, update the monomer software so that it reflects the physical layout of the deck. In order to actually perform experiments, you'll use these red actions, which let you schedule different types of experiments that you've configured in monomer. To start today, I'll just show a very simple media exchange. Already in our incubator, we have a number of different culture plates that have been growing there. What we're gonna now do is just queue up a media exchange for one of those plates that's growing in our incubator. This form in this demo is quite simple. We're just selecting our media type. Monomer has a protocol underneath this interface that is defining exactly how much media to add. And then we will go ahead and schedule that routine. Once it's scheduled from the schedule tab, we have this nice diagram that'll show us what's been scheduled and which instruments will be occupied when. And at this point, we could just set the system live. And if we look at this screen, you'll see that this is now animating. We've moved a media plate onto the OpenTrons deck. We've now moved our cell plate onto the OpenTrons deck done our exchange and moved it back to the incubator. It's happening quite quickly. So let me just slow this down. And we'll do that one more time. So again, I would schedule a media exchange by selecting the plate, my media type, and scheduling that routine. Once it's set live, you can view the progress of that from this from this screen. So now our media plate is on deck on the open trons. Here comes our culture plate. We're now performing the media addition and we'll move it back to the incubator. So this is just a quick little preview of Monomer's execution software. We'll get into some, some more components of our software in a little bit. I'm now gonna just hand this to Carter, who's gonna go over just a few tips and tricks for, for building these work cells. And then we'll pause for questions. Thanks, Sam. Um, all right, so a few tips and tricks for building automating wor automated work cells are uh, first uh, to make your own fridge. Um, <laughs> automated fridges can be quite expensive and if you just have a few plates of media um your robot arm is strong enough to open and close sliding doors um so that's one uh tip see this kind of cute anthropomorphic action here um then the next tip and trick uh, is to use nest cameras um for just one or two monitoring devices on a work cell, um, Nest cameras are really great. Uh, so especially the first generation um, and the subscription model allows you to continually um, monitor the work cell even when you're not there. Um, so you can feel comfortable running tests um, and debugging or troubleshooting issues that arise. Uh, the, the third piece that we suggest, especially for uh, robotic work cells where you're not time constrained, is to have a central place that you move to all other locations from. Um, this makes it so that you're not, uh, you don't have like combinatoric scaling with um, the number of nests that you have. Then point where if the, there's a bit of, if there's a bit of unbalanced um, or like tilted plates, uh, it will settle back into uh, that golden teach point. Um, the next suggested tip for monomer is to lock everything down. Um, so mount everything with screws and, and brackets. Uh, so that if you bump into a table, it doesn't uh, mess all of your teach points up. Um, then the, 
you should also not put a robot in a microscope on the same air table or like pressurized optical table. Um, this is because you don't want to have the robotics arms movement um, messing up the microscope imaging um, because that robotic movement will move the entire table if it's uh, pressurized. Uh, and lastly, it's strongly suggested that you plan for power outages. Um, labs sometimes can't don't have the best um, electrical wiring. And so you don't want your entire work cell kind of failing mid-step um, because of a power outage and then not really being able to recover it. So we strongly suggest having an uninterrupted power supply uh, connected to all critical devices. All right. So maybe we can pause there. And again, if there mm -hmm. are questions, feel free to um, write them into the Q&A. Um, and we do have one question, Carter. Maybe you can yeah. do this one, which is how do you communicate with uh, instruments? How do we connect to instruments and speak with them? Yeah, so uh, we connect to instruments in several different ways. Uh, and typically, it's through the interfaces that are exposed to us by the instrument manufacturers. Um, so typically, we Um, an example Sorry, of this Carter, would be, you, you cut, can you repeat yourself there? You cut out for just a moment. Yeah. Um, we connect to, uh, instruments over their device APIs. Um, there are several different forms of those. Um, but, uh, for, for example, the OpenTrons has two different, uh, ways of connecting to it. Um, we use the SSH, uh, connection. So we can copy and paste protocols directly into the OpenTrons, um, instrument and then execute the protocol. Um, we're actually going to be moving to the HTTP API, but it's still in beta. So we're excited to, to use that in the future. We have another uh, question here. For what growth scales volume-wise these systems work on? So maybe you could talk a bit about the plate formats. Yeah, so the uh, plate formats that can work on our work cells are uh, 96 well, 24 well, 12 well, and six well plates. Any SBS plate. There's also a one well auto flask um, that's sold by Griner um, that you can use. It's just a fully flat plate. Um, so for volume wise, it, it, you're limited to those that SBS format. So you can't use large multi level racks um, of flasks. Um, but each plate is contained. And so you can. Uh, it really you're limited by the um, incubator space that you have for how much the volume of cells you can grow. Um, Great. We'll move on. Move on here to um, uh, automating the liquid handling and the the cell culture on the OpenTron specifically. Um, and uh, there are several different types of cell culture that we've automated. Um, using the OpenTrons. Uh, and the three categories are adherent cells, uh, cells that are in suspension, and mammalian organoids or, or 3D cell culture. Um, there are several, uh, a lot of things that you can do to cells, but we've chunked them into three different kind of actions, which are to feed, um, move this, feed the cells, move the cells around, and then measure them. Um, and those are different for each of these cell types. Um, so for adherent cells, we uh, have, uh, we can exchange media fully. Um, we can add media, we can, and we can just remove it um, for sampling. Um, but you do need a tilt plate if you're going to do full media exchanges uh, because the um, six wells, 12 wells, 24 well plates, um, you're gonna have a lot of residual volume. So if you're trying to do a full media exchange, you have to have a tilt plate to mimic that manual full media exchange. Um, for moving the cells around, uh, for adherent cells, you do have to actually lift them up off the plate first, um, similar to how you would do in manual cell, pa uh, manual passaging or, um, manual cell culture. Uh, so how, how you do that is, um, you would add a, an enzymatic or chemical cocktail to release the cells from the extracellular matrix or for their, from their, um, bound state. And then you would tilt the plate and repeatedly wash the cells down. Um, 
you then aspirate the, the washed cells that are now in suspension and uh, transfer them to a prepared plate, either to passage them or to sample them um, for some readout. And how we typically measure adherent cells is uh, very, fairly easy. We put them on an automated microscope or plate reader um, and take images of the, uh, the cells. Because they're adherent, we can just take that 2D image of the adherent Um, another way that you could also measure these is, I think my internet connection is a little bit unstable. We're good? Okay. Um, another way that we could image these or measure these is to do that resuspension step and then put them on a flow cytometer or some other type of cell counter. Yeah. Bring them down first. Why don't you start suspension again? Sorry, Carter. Cut out. Sounds great. Um, you don't want to do suspension cells without spinning them, uh, media exchanges for suspension cells without spinning them down first. So typically we either add uh, media only um, or we add a centrifuge into the system to spin the, down, the cells down, pellet them, do a full media exchange, and then resuspend them. Uh, for sampling suspension cells or passaging suspension cells, we're going to have to mix them because they typically they settle to the bottom. So what we've found is in that any plates uh, that are greater or smaller than 96 wells, so 12 well or 24 well plates, you actually have to do a specialized mixing pattern um, that, that's not built into the open trons, but that we can, uh, we're happy to share the code with people that, that are interested, but a compass pattern, and we'll walk through that a little bit later. Um, that mixes at four different corners and then aspirates from the center. Um, and for measuring the suspension cells, we can't use image data. So typically we'll use flow cytometers, uh, cell counters, or, or just plate readers to measure absorbance. Um, and for organoids, uh, we strongly discourage doing media uh, full media exchanges because you might suck up the organoid. So um, you have to be very careful with, with organoids and uh, make sure to only remove some media at a time, um, like typically half media exchanges and be very careful with where you teach the tip height. So you want the tip height to be at about half of where the volume is going to be um, halfway up the well. Uh, and for passaging and sampling them, uh, it's strongly discouraged that you're moving organoids with an automated system. You just don't have the finesse that a human hand might have. So uh, it's suggested that if you wanna move the organoid in or rehome them into a larger well, you, uh, you do so manually. Um, and the measurement for organoids uh, is typically microscopy we've found with our customers. We have a question here, Carter. Does the system accommodate for plates of cells that require shaking? for growth? Mm, uh, the system, we have, there are several incubators that do shake um, during growth. Uh, we haven't integrated uh, that version of some of the incubators, um, but the same incubator companies that we work with have shaking systems. Um, so if you need that, then yes, our system would accommodate for that. Um, and you'd have, typically not be shaking them while you're transferring media and doing the operations on them. But then when they were to be in the incubator, because it's a shaking incubator, it would accommodate um, cell types that need to be shaken for growth. I will also add that we can integrate with the OpenTron's heater shaker module, which not necessarily for growing cells, but if you are doing staining or washing, you know that's a really great module. You can stick the plate on it and let it shake for a while. And that can be controlled through monomer software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it has the automatic latching, which means that it's uh, it's very automation friendly. Um, we place down the plate and then trigger an automation automatic close and open sequence. Um, well designed module. Uh, the liquid handling uh, tip kind of liquid handling for cell culture. Um, or, or suggestions for the OpenTrons, specifically with the P1000 by Pet Hat, is that uh, most liquid classes work when you're doing cell culture work, either transferring reagents, cytokines, um, media, 
or cells. Uh, they'll work uh, just off the shelf with uh, greater than 200 micrometers. So like with the standard flow rate of the pipette head. Um, when you Uh, when you have small volumes of cytokines that you um, when you have small volumes of cytokines uh, and growth factors, you want to dilute them to being greater than 100 microliters uh, and that, that will in, uh, make you have more consistent pipetting. Um, as we mentioned, strongly suggest doing a compass pattern for any wells that are any plates that are less than 96 wells. Um, so 24 well, 12 well, six well. Um, and and to draw from that center when you sample those uh, and for pasting especially with adherent cells uh, it's suggested that you play around with the enzymatic cocktail to make sure that your cell line um, functions like there, there's not uh, for ipscs we found that certain enzymatic cocktails like releaser work well with variable temperatures um, but different cell lines do respond quite differently um, and so expecting to play around with the enzymatic cocktail and wash parameters of how aggressively you're pipetting to wash the cells down. Um, uh, and just to kind of highlight, dial in on that compass pattern, um, the blue dots are where we mix inside of a well. And then that white center dot is where we aspirate from. So you're mixing and kind of pushing the cells, making them kind of royal inside of the the um, inside of the well, homogenized, and then you aspirate from the center. Um, and we found that that is makes the suspension passaging equivalent between manual and automated. Um, some just quirks of automating feeding uh, and suggestions that we have that might be different from manual uh, cell culture is that we suggest preparing media in. Uh, separate reagent plates that are 96 well format. Um, this allows you to have uh, a, a decreased likelihood of contamination. So you don't have to waste a bunch of tips. So if you're trying to feed multiple wells inside of a plate, um, you can uh, remove media, uh, media exchange with the same tip that you drop, you aspirate um, media with. From. So you can see that here. Um, and here you see the tilt pop, uh, tilt module that we uh, we mentioned earlier in action, uh, which allows you to fully aspirate the two mils of media that are in the well. Um, and then we're grabbing with the same tip, we're grabbing media and pipetting that in. And then we discard the tip afterwards um, and move on to the next well. And we, we try to, do one well at a time to minimize air exposure um, throughout that process, uh, because that can lead to cell death if it's tilted and uh, media free. All right, uh, Sam, I'm gonna go back to back a slide before the, the video. Uh, the other suggestions that we have is that we keep media plates lidded always uh, other than when they're on the deck under a HEPA filter. Um, so that's how we maintain uh, sterility in our uh, systems is using that open trans HEPA filter as the only location where the plates are unlidded. And uh, there are some physical, physical limitations of the open trans deck. It wasn't explicitly designed with robotic grippers in mind, but it's been fairly easy to modify it to allow for um, robotic usage. Uh, so some of the steps that you would you would follow is to remove metal clips. Um, the the OpenTrons deck comes with these metal clips to, to um, create the, to secure the plates inside of the nests. And you want to remove those because robotic grippers can't really interface with them um, very easily. Uh, so you won't have consistent placement. Um, the second piece that's critical is to use custom deck adapters to spread out the OpenTrons nest locations. Um, 
between each open trans nest, it's about three millimeters of aluminum. Um, but a robotic gripper finger is typically about five to six millimeters thick. Uh, so you'll, if you have two plates side by side, um, then tr you can't pick up one without uh, knocking into the other. Um, so we had developed these custom deck adapters, which we're happy to share um, with anybody that's uh, interested. We can share the CAD uh, of these 3D printed modules that spread out the deck. Uh, and you can still access all 96 wells um, of a plate with a P1000 or a P300, but it, um, it does allow you to each other. Um, and the last piece, which I think we've mentioned previously, but just to drill in, you really want to secure the OT2 to the desktop, uh, to the bench top, because the uh, uh, hip checking a, an open trans will mess up hours of teaching. Um, so uh, the, a third concern for the open trans is that robotic arms typically can't reach that far into instruments. Um, so you're likely going to only have about six deck locations that the open trans, uh, that the robotic arm can manually or can load and unload, and then you'll be manually loading and unloading the rest of the slots. All right. Um, to drill deeper into the deck accessories, uh, you can use a lid nest, which you'll see in a bit, um, for unlidding and lidding. And then for adherent cells, that tilt module. So this is just some CAD that, again, we're happy to share um, the CAD for this with anybody that's interested. Um, and you saw the open trons um, depressing the and tilting the plate and untilting it previously. Um, this this uh, is a robotic arm loading the deck slot that we mentioned that has that offset um, and then unlitting it. Uh, unlitting the plate. And you see this double lid holder. Uh, this allows for the lids to stay sterile um, as well. So we're not moving the lids off the deck, but we're not taking up more deck slots than we really want to. Um, all right. Sam, do you mind uh, moving forward? Great. And last, we come to how does our software drive the OpenTrons? Um, and it's a two-step process. First, we build um, an open trans protocol. You'll see this on the right. Uh, and it, the open trans protocol is entirely compilable and runnable on um, any open trans app that you have. Um, but you can also copy and paste it into Jupyter Notebook. Um, the things that are different are these per, this params section as well as the definition section right below it. Um, that param section, what you see here on the right is just are just defaults for this protocol. And on the left is the second piece of the puzzle, which is the manifest um, that our system reads and fills. The pips that are currently um, unused. Can you uh, say that again, Carter there? Sorry, yeah. when you're explaining what we pass in. We pass in uh, information that our system knows inherently, which is how many tips are left in a tip rack, um, what, reagent well, uh, what reagent wells have been used, um, as well as which wells our um, users want to passage or exchange the media of. And that's passed in um, in our software. Let's pause here and again, feel free to write questions into the Q&A if there are any. Great. Awesome. So thank you, Carter, for walking through some of the nitty gritty of automating cell culture with the open trans, both from a science perspective and from an automation perspective. And I just want to reiterate that any of those accessories that we mentioned and talked over, if anybody's interested, um, we'll, we'll find a way to get the CAD designs online and accessible to you, um, and we can talk through how we make use of them. Similarly, uh, we are happy to share our OpenTrans protocols, for instance, for the compass pattern that Carter mentioned.
We want to finish today's webinar with just a short demo that speaks to the vision of Monomer, uh, specifically our vision for what we're describing as closed loop automation for cell culture. So earlier when I was demonstrating the software, we were focusing on the execution portion of Monomer. How could we queue up a media exchange uh, for plates that have been loaded onto the system? We're going to move to our new product, which we call our cell culture manager. And you can think of this as a layer that sits on top of the scheduler and provides a, a scientific data centric view of the samples that are on the work cell, as well as the results that are being generated against those samples, you know, in this case, by the microscope, which is our readout. So earlier, we were looking at this first layer of execution. How do we communicate with instruments? What does it look like to run an experiment on the work cell? And now we're going to look at what does it look like to manage the data coming off the work cell and quickly flow that back into how you're uh, doing your work. So in this example, we've got 10 six well plates of IPS cell cultures. We seeded these maybe last night or early this morning, and we've taken one round of bright field images on a citation. I can, I can view each of these images. We're actually taking 12 images within one specific well, and then we have a confluence percentage that's been computed for us. So Monomer is ingesting this data off of the microscope and then presenting it to you, the operator, as you're running your experiments. If I click into a particular well, I can see information about the culture that's inside of that well. So what is the cell line? parent, passage number, and any data that have been captured against it, like these images that we took. On the right is a summary view of growth data. Specifically, this is a projected growth curve. And then over time, as we gather more and more images, we'll superimpose the real growth plot over this projected curve. The idea is you can develop your own growth curve projections and embed those in monomer, and then you can start predicting when you'll uh, have a certain amount of cells or your well has reached a certain confluence. In my demo, I'm going to simulate that these cells are growing up in the incubator. So I'm moving forward through time. I'm going to move forward two days. Over the course of those two days, these cells are now growing. And if I, if I click back into this particular well, now you'll see that I have three sets of images. I've imaged these once a day for the last three days. On my overview, I now am, am superimposing my real growth curve, and I can just view the growth progress of this particular culture. From the process log, I have an audit trail of what the work cell has done to this particular well. So again, this is connecting into the scheduling layer that we looked at earlier. As the liquid handler, the OpenTrons, is doing a media exchange, Monomer is recording that and surfacing that on the samples record. Similarly, each time we do an imaging routine, it's recorded and surfaced here. What we are working on now is we're working with our customers to develop machine learning algorithms that will detect anomalies. This is an example of, of uh, some contamination. We're seeing some some decreased growth rates. Monomer is going to use that machine learning to flag these images and surface them for the operator. So the operator can quickly intervene or course correct, or maybe just in the case of some contamination like we're seeing there, go ahead and terminate those cultures. This view is then communicating down to the work cell. The robotic arm will remove those plates from the incubator and allow the operator to dispose of them while the rest of the plates continue on with the process as scheduled. One last example of this automatic detection or this, this uh, analysis of these images uh, is more of a positive example, which is we've set a threshold, a confluence threshold, that once we've hit that threshold, we wanna queue up a passage. So here we have Monomer flagging our wells that have hit that number. And what we can do at this point is select our overconfluent cultures and schedule a passage. And again, this is communicating down to the work cell layer. It's going to execute a passage routine that, like the ones we've talked about, Carter just spoke about, on the OpenTrons. And after it does it, it's going to seed a full new six well plate from that one 
consumed well. So those wells that are passaged are marked as consumed. I have a new plate that's been seeded. The relationship between that parental culture and the now daughter culture is all tracked. And again, we'll just continue on with the process. And now Monomer is gonna track growth data against this new, this new sample that we just created. Because we are managing not just the scientific data, but the actual execution of the experiment, we have a deep understanding of all of the reagents and components that are being added to the culture. And what that lets us do is we can look through our past cultures. For instance, let's look through the ones that were terminated. And I'll click one of these terminated cultures. You'll see that in these, this media lots field, one of our media lots has been highlighted red. And that's because the monomer software is understanding that this particular media lot Everywhere where it was used, we saw cell death, perhaps related to contamination. So it's a troubleshooting feature that allows you to drill into the details of your process and try to figure out why it is you're getting specific types of results. From here, we want to develop machine learning algorithms for all different cell types and all different use cases, not just tracking growth rates or tracking cell death, but for instance, detecting morphological changes. Uh, a lot of the customers that we're working with at Monomer are culturing IPS cells, and they want to maintain those in that pluripotent state. And so we're working on algorithms, for instance, to detect when, let's say, a dendrite is forming, some differentiation is happening. Um, Monomer will flag that for the operator and allow them to course correct. And once you increase your capacity to some of these, the scale that we talked about, for instance, with Science Corp, where you're running 220 plates, you really need that flagging and that anomaly tracking view to manage all the data that the system is generated. So that wraps up um, the demo for today. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, and we're happy to stick on and, and, and continue to, to answer questions. Um, please, again, feel free to write in to the Q&A. We need some theme music. Elevator music, robot music. Just the sound of robots moving around, which is always pleasant. Um, we have a question oh, here. Yeah, have you incorporated the system with live cell imaging devices that detect fluorescence as well? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have. Um, there, are, most most microscopes have uh, automated microscopes have incubation options, so heated in. CO2 uh, and the ability to continually take images. So um, yeah, it's kind of a, a core feature of, of microscopes that we can integrate with is that you can do live cell imaging using them. We have another question here. Have we integrated this for cell-based gene expression analysis? The short answer is that's on our roadmap. Um, we're working with some customers now to expand some of the workflows we support from beyond just cell culture and actually doing more cell line development. Um, so we are working on that right now. Uh, we anticipate it's all possible. Um, it's just not something that we've done quite yet. Yeah. Um, uh, one of our customers does use the flow cytometer um, to, to stain and specific stains to, to understand gene expression um of car t cells uh, from my understanding thanks Carly. uh question here which is 
uh, you mentioned the Citation 5 and the Thermo Fisher Attune as readout devices. Are there any instruments that are not compatible in a work cell? Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, so for, a work, for it to be compatible in the work cell where there's a robotic arm, um, or at least the robotic arms that we work with, um, it has to be in a plate based format. So uh, any device that takes in an input uh, as a tube only, and it isn't modified to accept plates as well, um, would be difficult to interface with. Um, if there is a specific assay type or instrument type that you're considering, feel free to email us. There's always little considerations like how easy is it for the uh, robotic fingers to access you know, the plate loading position. We've worked with lots of ones so we can share tips and tricks. Um, what does a ballpark cost with a robotic arm and other instruments? Um, you know, this is all based on your, uh, based on what your hardware setup is. Uh, the robotic arm is gonna go for about 30,000. Um, microscopes go for about 40,000. Uh, and then the incubators are quite variable. Um, if you can get things used, you can reduce the cost. Uh, for this particular work cell at Science, uh, you're looking at about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars of of hardware. Um, but generally speaking, this is the cheap way, cheaper way to automate cell culture. A lot of these all-in-one instruments that do, for instance, flask-based culture, are going to be hundreds of thousands to seven figures in cost. Another question is, is there a preferred equipment list with existing drivers? Yeah, we have a library of, of 30 or 40 drivers for equipment that we have worked with um, and have preferences for, but we're also open to adding support for new instruments if there are things that you like or already have that we haven't connected with. Um, we're happy to figure that out. It typically takes approximately like two weeks for us to build a new um, connection to a device. Um, it depends on the complexity of the API, um, but that typical two week mark. All right, and we have another question here, which is, uh, have you noticed contamination with the uh, OpenTrans HEPA module? And in the customers that have used um, that, have used that it, uh, sterility has not been an issue um, uh, up until this point. Um, so it, it has done a, a, a pretty good job of keeping the environment sterile, um, especially making sure that you're only moving the lids um, and unlitting them for short periods of time under that HEPA um, filter space. Okay, I think, has anyone got any other questions? The last 15 second final warning. Speak now. Okay, if not, then uh, Sam, Cast, that was really great. Thank you so much. That was a lot of, a lot of great questions as well. Um, we will send out the recording and the slides after um, after we, we shut this down so you will get a chance to review it. Um, and you can always um, email these guys, or if you don't have their email address, you can email us at info at opentrans.com and we'll connect you. We're just Sam at Monomer Bio, Carter at Monomer Bio. Okay, easy peasy. Um, thanks so much, both. Thank you. Thanks everybody for joining. Feel free Thank to reach for joining. out anytime. Great. Bye everyone. Thank you. Great.